All right, so now part two of this problem asks for the vertical displacement of point A just before the radial. So how far down does point A go at the instant before the rod yields? So that means let's take a look at the instant where the rod does yield. So at the instant when my rod yields, I can determine the strain in my rod AB, and that would just be the yield strain. So here we're gonna use Hooke's law because it relates stress to strain, sigma y, is E times epsilon Y. So the yield strain of this of this material is just gonna be 250 megapascals over 200 gigapascals. And here we gotta again make sure that we do the unit conversions. And another way that you could do this is just say 250 times 10 to the six. So I'm just converting everything back to pascals over 200 times 10 to the ninth pascals and this is 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 strain and there are no units for strain it would just be if you need units you can put any units you want you can put length over length so we'll put millimeter over millimeter and so now I have I know the strain in my rod a B at the instant just before the rod yields and now I can determine the new length of a B and then kind of come up with maybe a, a overall view of how this structure deforms let's in fact let's take one step back and just take a look at you know how does this thing behave or deform if I have this load applied what's gonna happen to it and when point a goes down in fact point a will it assuming deformations are super super small just because you know it's, it's gonna be a large structure and we can't really see what's happening so the deformations are really really small and what we can do is assume that point A pretty much goes straight down like this and the new location of A we'll call this right here A prime and my deformed shape will look like this and that yellow line represents essentially the deformed shape. And what we're really trying to find is this vertical displacement right here, this displacement, which I will call delta A. So if I look at this overall picture, I know the strain in rod AB at the instant I'm here at A prime B, and I can use the definition of strain to get a new length of A prime B. And in fact, when I look at this triangle looking thing, there's probably, I can use some geome geometric relationships and figure out what this delta A is. If I look really closely at this right here, so here's my zoom in of this thing. And in fact, let me clean this up a little bit. I probably see this, this little triangle, which I'll, I'll try to put in purple. This triangle right here, we know from a three, four, five triangle that this length right here is 2.5 meters. Yay. We're trying to find this right here. And what we also know is that this angle right here before, just before this angle right here was 90. And we know what this angle was before. This we'll call this theta right there. And that theta tan inverse of 1.5 over 2, 36.87 degrees. And that would mean that I know this entire angle all the way from line AB to line AA prime, if you will. And I, I'm trying to figure out this delta A. And if I know the d elongation of rod AB, then I can get the elongation or the length of this new A prime B, pr A prime B right here. I can determine this length right here, this L of A prime B. And if I can determine this length, A prime B, then I know this angle, I know this side, this, I could use a law of cosines and determine delta A. So, and here this would just be, from the definition of normal strain, I would have epsilon Y is the change in length, delta L, over the original length. And in this case, right here, the change in length, delta L, is equal to the original length, L zero, times the yield strain in this case, and here this would just be 2.5 meters times 1.25 times 10 to the minus three. And this is 3.125 times 10 to the minus three meter, which is the same as 3.125 millimeters. And that would make the final, the new length of my rod, this L A prime B, 
would be the original length of the rod plus the change in length. And that original length was 2,500 millimeters plus 3.125 millimeters, which makes the new or the final length of this rod 2,503.125 millimeters. And now I want to just use my geometry or the law of cosines to determine this delta A. And oy, some of you might need a refresher. I know every now and then I need a refresher of law of cosines. But here you can just look this up on, you know, just Google it or something, right? You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Google. And here's the law of cosines, which you could look up on the internet or some textbook that you have right here. But it's just a geometric relationship. This here, it's C squared, which is the angle, which is the side that's opposite to the angle that we're looking at, is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of this angle phi. And here, if, you know, another thing to notice is if, if phi is 90 degrees, it's just, you know, it's back to Pythagorean theorem. And so if I take a big look at this picture right here, then I know that this angle, which was theta plus 90, this I'm going to call the angle phi. So phi is just theta plus 90 degrees, which was 36.87 degrees plus 90, which is 126.87 degrees. This side right here was this LA prime B. This was my original length L0, which was 2.5 meters. And this this side right here represents that vertical displacement of point A from A to A prime. And so now if I use the law of cosines and relate it to this, I would have, let's see, I would have L A prime B squared is equal to L zero squared plus delta A squared minus two times L zero times delta A cosine of 126.87 degrees. And now if I plug and chug some numbers, I would have, and now I have one equation, one unknown, and I just need to solve for delta A, and I can do that. After you get some numbers here, you want to use the quadratic formula and solve for delta A, and that'll give you that this delta A is equal to 5.203 millimeters, and that is the vertical displacement of point A. 5.203 millimeters downwards. Now, there is a way to do this problem, at least a strain portion of this problem, without using the law of cosines. And I wonder if you can figure that out. So I'll leave it here and hopefully maybe you can figure out the triangle that you would use to determine this without the law of cosines. All right, let me know in the comments below if you got an answer to that. Take it easy, see you later. Hopefully this was helpful. Structure.